The liver is the largest internal organ and is located in the upper right quadrant of the abdomen, just beneath the diaphragm. It extends from the right side of the body to the midline. It has a complex and somewhat irregular shape. It is often described as having a roughly triangular shape. Lobes Shape of the liver can be further broken down into its various lobes and segments. Right lobe The right lobe is the larger and more prominent portion of the liver. It is situated on the right side of the body and extends from the midline of the body to the right side. It is further divided into two smaller lobes, the anterior, front, and posterior, back, segments, by the right hepatic vein. Left lobe The left lobe of the liver is smaller and is located on the left side of the body. It extends from the midline to the left side. The left lobe is further divided into the medial and lateral segments. Quadrate lobe This small, square-shaped lobe is found on the undersurface of the liver, adjacent to the gallbladder. It is sometimes considered a separate lobe. Caudate lobe The caudate lobe is a small, tail-like extension of the liver that is located on the posterior surface of the liver, near the vena cava. These lobes and segments give the liver its complex and irregular shape. While the overall shape of the liver is often likened to a triangle, it is more accurately described as a multi-lobed, wedge-like organ with these distinct parts. Capsule The liver capsule is a dense, fibrous connective tissue that forms a protective layer around the entire liver. It is relatively tough and resilient. The capsule is composed of collagen fibers and connective tissue elements. The primary function of the liver capsule is to provide structural support to the liver and protect it from external forces. It helps maintain the liver's shape and integrity. The capsule also serves as a barrier that prevents the spread of infections or diseases from surrounding organs or tissues to the liver. The liver capsule is attached to the liver's outer surface, forming a close association with the organ. It also attaches to the surrounding structures in the abdominal cavity, including the diaphragm and the abdominal wall. This anchoring helps keep the liver in its proper anatomical position. The liver capsule is rich in nerve fibers, which makes it sensitive to stretching and pressure. In medical practice, the liver capsule's sensitivity can be used to diagnose certain liver conditions. For example, during a physical examination, a healthcare provider may apply gentle pressure to the right upper abdominal area to check for tenderness or discomfort, which may indicate liver issues. Blood vessels the liver is a highly vascular organ, meaning it has an extensive network of blood vessels that play a crucial role in its functions. These blood vessels serve various functions in the liver, including the supply of oxygen and nutrients, as well as the removal of waste products. Here are the main blood vessels associated with the liver. Hepatic artery The hepatic artery is responsible for supplying oxygen-rich blood to the liver. It typically branches off from the celiac artery which is a major branch of the abdominal aorta. This oxygenated blood is essential for the metabolic functions of the liver, particularly the hepatocytes or liver cells. The hepatic artery provides the liver with oxygen and nutrients. Portal vein The portal vein is a major blood vessel that carries nutrient-rich blood from the digestive organs to the liver. It collects blood from the stomach, intestines, spleen, and pancreas and delivers it to the liver. This blood is rich in the products of digestion, including nutrients and toxins. The liver plays a vital role in processing these substances and regulating blood sugar levels. Hepatic portal system The hepatic portal system is a unique circulatory system involving the portal vein. It allows the liver to filter and process nutrients, medications, and toxins before they enter the general circulation. This system is essential for detoxification and the regulation of various metabolic processes. Hepatic veins After the blood has been processed in the liver, it is collected by the hepatic veins. These veins transport the filtered, deoxygenated blood from the liver to the inferior vena cava, a large vein that carries blood back to the heart. The hepatic veins exit the liver at a location known as the hepatic hilum, typically on the underside of the liver. Sinusoids Within the liver, the hepatic artery, portal vein, and hepatic vein all converge into a complex network of tiny blood vessels known as sinusoids. 
The sinusoids are lined with hepatocytes and play a crucial role in the exchange of nutrients, gases, and waste products between the blood and liver tissue. Bile ducts Bile ducts are tubular structures that vary in size and complexity. They form a branching network that begins within the liver and extends through the biliary system to deliver bile to the small intestine. The main components of the bile duct system include the intrahepatic ducts, the extrahepatic ducts, and the common bile duct. Intrahepatic ducts These are the smaller bile ducts located within the liver itself. They collect bile from the liver's hepatocytes and converge to form larger ducts that eventually exit the liver. The intrahepatic ducts are responsible for transporting bile from the liver's lobules to the extrahepatic ducts. Extrahepatic ducts After exiting the liver, bile flows into the extrahepatic ducts, including the left and right hepatic ducts. These ducts merge to form the common hepatic duct, which continues outside the liver. Common bile duct the common hepatic duct joins with the cystic duct, which comes from the gallbladder, to form the common bile duct. The common bile duct is the final segment of the bile duct system. It carries bile from the liver and gallbladder to the small intestine. Just before entering the small intestine, the common bile duct usually joins with the pancreatic duct to form the hepatopancreatic ampulla which is also called ampulla of fata. This is where bile and pancreatic enzymes are released into the small intestine to aid in digestion. Sphincters To regulate the flow of bile into the small intestine, there are two important sphincters associated with the common bile duct, the hepatopancreatic sphincter and the sphincter at the duodenal papilla. These sphincters control the release of bile into the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine. Gallbladder The gallbladder is a small, pear-shaped organ located beneath the liver in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen. It is part of the biliary system, which includes the liver and the bile ducts. It is a muscular organ that can hold and store bile, a greenish-yellow digestive fluid produced by the liver. It has a neck, a body, and a fundus, and it typically measures 7 to 10 centimeters in length. Primary function of the gallbladder is to store and concentrate bile produced by the liver. Bile is necessary for the digestion and absorption of dietary fats. When you eat, especially when you consume fatty foods, the gallbladder contracts, releasing concentrated bile into the small intestine, specifically into the duodenum, through the common bile duct. This bile helps in emulsifying fats, breaking them down into smaller droplets for more efficient digestion and absorption by pancreatic enzymes. Bile Production The liver continuously produces bile, but it is not always needed for digestion. Excess bile is diverted into the gallbladder for storage and concentration. The gallbladder can concentrate bile by absorbing water and electrolytes from it, making the stored bile more potent. Bile Composition Bile is composed of water, bile salts, bilirubin, cholesterol, and electrolytes. Bile salts are the primary component responsible for emulsifying fats, aiding in their digestion. Bilirubin gives bile its characteristic color. Regulation The release of bile from the gallbladder is controlled by hormonal signals. Cholecystokinin or CCK is a hormone released in response to the presence of fats in the small intestine. CCK stimulates the contraction of the gallbladder and the relaxation of the sphincter of Adi which is the muscular valve that controls the flow of bile into the small intestine, allowing bile to flow into the duodenum. Gallstones Gallstones can form within the gallbladder due to the precipitation of cholesterol or bilirubin. These stones can block the flow of bile and cause various problems, including gallbladder inflammation, cholecystitis, gallstone obstruction of the bile ducts, cholecystitis, or infection, cholecystitis. When gallstones cause symptoms or complications, surgical removal of the gallbladder, cholecystectomy, may be necessary. Removal in cases of severe gallbladder disease or frequent gallstone issues, surgical removal of the gallbladder called cholecystectomy may be recommended. The removal of the gallbladder is a common procedure and does not significantly affect digestion, as the liver can still produce bile that flows directly into the small intestine. The liver is an indispensable organ that performs an array of critical functions essential for maintaining overall health and well-being. Its role in metabolism, detoxification, digestion, 
an immune function makes it one of the most important organs in the body.